Hakun Debar is our guest right now. Mr. Debar, uh, good to have you on News and Views, sir. Thank you for having me, Joe. What is this about? How come you want to be mayor of Fargo? Joel, I want to be, uh, this is Hakun Dabar, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. And uh, I came to Fargo 2014 to come to reunite with my mom. It was February, cold, came from Kenya. And basically, I came here, and I'm going to tell you about this, and I think it's good for you to hear that your sister, the Senator Heidi Kamp, actually helped my mom to make sure that we reunite with my mom. She was the one who helped her and get sent to documents to immigration to make sure we come and, you know, make sure that we reunite with my mom, who we did not meet her for a decade. So, Holy cow, good. Good, simple, good, good. Yes. The reason, the reason why I'm running is because after having a lot of conversation with uh, families, friends, neighbors, and, um, and most of the time they talk about workforce, you know, uh, the workforce shortage in the town, in the area as well. And be, for me, being coming here, started a local nonprofit, and my focus is, was making sure that and, and making sure that I put folks to workforce. Making sure that I put uh, folks on the workforce, make sure that they get jobs and uh, stable jobs, good paying jobs. And been working with families and especially new American families to come here to integrate and thrive in our area. And I've been done a lot of that. And the conversation I had with the people was, we don't have enough workforce. And this is what I want to brought to City Hall, that this is my expertise, making sure that I create access to individuals who are looking for jobs, make sure I connect with them. And that is why in my platform you see that I'm going to be creating a workforce department that will create help individuals that are looking for jobs and also the, the employers as well. You know, I, I want to thank you for that because that's a conversation that, that needs to be had. And, uh, you know, we, we all talk about how we need workers, but very few people are pointing out where we can find workers and, and how families can get together. Um, I'm glad to hear a- after a decade that your family reconnected. And uh, Mr. Dabar, I, I have to tell you this, you live what what you talk about. I mean, you've been a community activist and you're a small business owner. And so, you know, for coming here in 2014, you have already made quite a difference. I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm I'm pretty impressed. Uh, you know, and then to be throwing your hat in for mayor, uh, you're you're not afraid to get active, are you? I'm not. I'm not. Actually, I have to also add you on that. I went to uh, started on the English language class here in the community. I went to school here. Graduated from MSCM and uh, recently and got my degree from there. And, um, you know, I'll tell you this. I, I don't know if you remember about this. When even the state of North Dakota introduced, you know, banned refugees coming to North Dakota, we were the folks who came here, went to Bismarck, talked to the, uh, the state legislators who were actually Republicans, sit down with them, talk to them, and tell them our stories. And then later they put uh, the bill on, onto the trash. They say that it, it will not go through. And we were the folks who sharing about our stories. You know, I'm a, I'm a person that, you know, I go to uncomfortable places, talk to individuals, and uh, tell them about our stories, tell them who we are. This is what we do. We're here also to be part of the American dream as well. Well, I, I, I can tell you this, the, the campaign, the discussion needs to have someone like you in it to, to be part of that discussion. Uh, I think that the biggest problem, and I had a conversation uh, Hakun, uh, with an individual last night when I was coming home, and and they're going to come on with me uh, on the radio later in the week, and the biggest concern they have with their businesses is finding workers. They they can't find workers, and, you know, it it doesn't matter what they do, and it isn't just one of them. It, it They can do almost anything to try, but they, they can't find workers, and so how people connect uh, – with, you know, the communities that, that you're very familiar with and the workers that we need, it seems that there's a major disconnect there. And so is your campaign going to gonna talk about that? Are you going to focus on that? Yes. Actually, uh, that is where I'm going to help a lot. And this is, you know, the work I've done in the community, talk to the companies, uh, connect them with employers. And actually, recently we had the conversation with Amazon, you know, the conversation I had with them was like they, they're looking for almost 1,000 workers. And this is what I told them was like, 
you know, you're paying $17, put it $19 or $20, we can get for you enough workforce that you need. We have folks that don't speak the language, but they, we have ESL, uh, ESL class on the weekend. They're learning how to speak to their fellow associate, and uh, they will work. They don't speak the language, but they're ready to work and get it done. And the problem that we have in Fargo right now is there's no access. We are, you know, there's not that access that workers reaching out, companies reaching out, and being on the nonprofit sector, we tried to bridge that. We had a conversation with companies here as well and making sure that they hire. We actually, I'll, I'll tell you this. What we do is we have something called a strength and barrier form. Strength and barrier form is something that it's a barrier that somebody who's looking for, for a job can face. Transportation, housing, childcare, and all that. We put down all that. We make sure that in the course of our program, we remove one or two barriers from the list. And, uh, and mostly we sit down with employer and tell them, like, they don't speak the language, but try two to three individuals. We connect them with one or two individuals that speak English that can help them, can work with them. And they try it. Some of them will say, okay, I need more. So that is what they're lacking. Employers connecting with them to people who are looking for a job. And that is why I need to create a workforce department at the city hall to make sure that it helps both the workers and, and the employers as well. So if you had complete power... If you had the power to, to do something that you've been working on, uh, to try to bridge some of the gaps you just described, what would it be? What, what, what would you do? So basically is um, what I'll tell you is um, what we need to do is we need to bring people back on the table. We need to talk, especially the workers and the employers. So what we are unable to find is, and actually we went to the city hall a lot of time with folks uh, who looks like me and sit down with the city and um, administration, talk to, them, talk to them about we need to bring the employer on the table. And the city needs to take a leadership about this because they don't know us. And, um, and there's, you know, there's unknown fears. That, but when people talk to each other, understand each other, learn their culture, we are able to work together, which is that's not in the table. And uh, a lot of time you see that, you know, the government, they have to put their role to make sure that they bridge this, create that access, and it's not happening. And that is why that is what I need to create while I'm there. So l- let's let's go a step further and, and not be afraid to to break through some some glass doors here of of what you can talk about and what you can't. In your time in the community, what have you found? Do do you think that Fargo is a racist community? I'll tell you this. I don't think Fargo is a racist community, but we don't know each other. And uh, what I find out is when individuals that don't like to you, when you sit down and talk to them and have conversation with them. I'll give you an example. Representative Chris Olson, I think he was a representative from West Fargo. He's the one who was introduced the bill, uh, ban refugees coming to Fargo. What we did, we reached out to him, we sit down with him, we invited him to... Uh, to the one of the immigrant restaurants and uh, had coffee and conversation with him. And he didn't know all that information. And uh, later, he, you know, we always used to reach out to him. The problem is we are not talking to each other. And then, you know, a lot of time is integration is two ways. Because if you see the new American families, they try to integrate fully, talk to the people. But if you look at the mainstream side, they're not getting out from their side. They're not coming out from their comfortable side. But uh, what happened is basically we need to talk to each other, understand each other, meet each other. If you don't know me, come and sit, come and talk to me. You know, let's have conversation about it. And that is how we're going to bridge about it. We need to talk to each other and learn about each other. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit when we come back about uh, schools. And you would mentioned MSUM and the role it played in your life. Uh, I know a number of individuals at the high school level that are, uh, go to school with new Americans. And uh, it's made them uh, better people because of it. It has. It's made them more understanding. And, of course, th- there's things that go along with that as well that we shouldn't be afraid to talk about. But, uh, Mr. Debar, if if people want to get to know you online, do you have a Facebook page? I mean, is there a way for them to connect with you there? Yes, I do. Uh, so my Facebook page is Hakun Debar for Fargo Mayor. And uh, my website is hukundabar.com. It's H-U-K-U-N-D-A-B-A-R.com. And those links will be tied to this podcast. Uh, Please stick around. A couple more questions for you right after this. Thank you.
Welcome back to News and Views. Uh, Hakun Debar is our guest. He's running for mayor in the city of Fargo. Uh, he's a community organizer, a small business owner, and uh, I, I look at him as an accomplished, uh, a conduit, uh, and a man who has clearly reached some accomplishments in his life. Um, but, Mr. Debar, you're going to have to answer questions like this in public forums and, uh, you know, when, when you're getting into debates as a mayor, uh, one of the questions or, or comments that, that come to us in our text club uh, at our I Consultants of North Dakota 35270 text club says, are you kidding me? This guy would be an absolute mess and is all talk. Typical Democrat. What do you answer to that? I'm going to say this. Uh, once you elect me, you're going to see change in the city hall. I'll be the champion for the people. And... Um, and, you know, if you look at my platform, you'll see an um, spe- end in a special assessment. You see workforce development. You see, you know, all my plans is for the people. I'm not for, you know, and the big real estate people because I've been to um, I've been to having everything and I've been to having nothing. And um, I'm just, uh, you know, a normal uh, Joe uh, that want to improve people's life. And I'm going to bring change to City Hall. So, you know, oftentimes when people are running against an incumbent that still that has the job and still wants the job, I think the only way to beat that person is to point out what you'd do differently. And and not in general broad terms. You know, I'd work to make Fargo a more, you know, in- inclusive community, those type of things. But but what has Mayor Mahoney done wrong? What what has he done that made you shake your head and say, you know what, I wouldn't do that? I'll tell you this and um Right now, if you look at the employer side, they need leadership. They need people. They need workforce. And that's not happening. The city hall right now, you see that there's no new ideas, new innovation on how to fill the jobs that are available in the area. And on my side, because I've worked on this, I know about this, I learn about it, I put people to workforce, and I'm going to create that access. I'm going to be different with the current administration simply because I've done this work and I'll do it and I'll prove it. Are there people in Fargo that aren't employed and not working uh, from communities that you know better than I? Are, are, the, are there individuals that aren't getting a job because of who they are? Yes. There's a lot of people who don't have a job right now looking for a job every day that don't have the access. We try. We, we train them. We create them. But they're not getting the jobs that are available. You see, we, we have 10 to 15 individuals looking for a job every day. Whenever I see that there's research out, that there's 5,000 jobs available, 6,000 jobs available in the area, and there's no enough workforce, I always like, uh, I think that there's, there's, a, there's a people who are looking for a job, but there's not that access. And that is what have, City Hall has to, be, has to create. See, and that I don't understand. Uh, you know, I, I don't. If, if that would be the case, you'd be one of the first per, uh, people that I'd be talking to to be the conduit I just described, because the the people I know that are looking for workers, they don't care what religion they are. They don't care what color they are. They care whether or not they show up for work. They care whether or not they work hard. They care whether or not they want to be there and work. And so I I just don't understand this disconnect, uh, Hukon. I just... uh, Hakun, I, I, I don't get it. I, I mean, wh- are we doing a good enough job in media to get the word out on this? I'll, I'll tell you this. The disconnect is because the employer, basically, they don't speak different language. They speak English. And uh, a lot of them, they, some of them, they have never worked with the new Americans. Some of them, they have never met with them. And I think they need a leadership, someone, you know, at the city hall to come and tell them, you know, I have these folks, you know, come and try them. Let, let me pilot project, do it, try it, and let's see, and I'm going to give you support. And that's not happening because we reach out to employers, talk to them, sit down with them. The, we try to convince them to make sure at least hire two to three individuals. Try them. Let's yep. see how they do for them. And okay. w- when you sit down with them, they, w- they always... I've only got five seconds left here, so... Hakun, thank you so much. We'll have more conversations about this. Hakun Dabar, ladies and gentlemen, you'll find him on social media.